Today's guest needs no introduction, but in case you have been living in seclusion for the last some odd 20 years, let me introduce the iconic Kelly Rutherford. Kelly was born in Kentucky and grew up in California where she began her acting career. Best known for her roles on Mel Melrose Place and then of course her role as Lily Vanderwoodson in Gossip Girl from 2007 to 2012. She is an activist for women and the environment, a mother, an artist, and an all-around incredible human being. Mm. It is my pleasure to welcome my friend, Kelly Rockford. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, we're always talking anyway. We may as well <laughs> I do know, this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll record it. I'm so happy to have you on oh. here because you have been an inspiration to me oh my on goodness. my path to self-discovery. And I know that you are an inspiration to so many people. Mm, thank you. Well, we've known each other so long. Yes, we so have. So long since my probably like 13, 14, well, no, probably like 10 years, 10 or 11 years, yeah, yeah which is yeah, a long time. It's a long time. So okay. thank you for having me. And I was wondering if you might start by talking to us about your beginnings, like where you grew up or mm. how you grew up and what it was like. Mm. Well, I was born in Kentucky, in a very small town in Kentucky, and my parents were in college together at the University of Tennessee, so they met and had me rather quickly. And um, so, yeah, we were in Kentucky, but then we we moved so much. I lived there, I was only, like, I think, six months old when we moved, and then we moved around a lot when I was a kid. Um, my ancestors are a lot of explorers, and mm. I feel that energy now in my life, like this sort of explorer energy and wanting to sort of keep moving, you know, keep going and right. keep moving. Um, so, yeah, and I grew, I, had, I grew up partly in California. Okay. And then New York a little bit. I studied acting in New York, and mm -hmm. then, you know, I went to high school in California, which was beautiful. It was really, really nice. Um, yeah, so I mean, my growing up was was really it was interesting. I went to a lot of different schools, and I think it helped me so much adapt and judge less. Like I look back now, and mm. and you know, I was caught up like every kid in the dramas of school a little bit, you know, and the friends and the this right. and that and the boys and the you know love and yeah everything. But it also made me an observer. Hmm. more than I think I would have been if I had maybe grown up in the same place and stayed in the same place. Right. And a lot more compassionate for different people. And I really very quickly realized, okay, these are the cool people. These are the people that are kind of the artists. These are the sort of jocks, the people that are, you know, more sporty. And, right. you know, all these different, how we categorize people. Interesting. Was, was really interesting to me. And I think a lot of that was what was developing in me as an actress or somebody who, who was able to see people and their characters and why we make the choices we make. Right. And, and finding it fascinating. That's amazing that you, at a young age, were already contemplating those things. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I guess that, yeah, definitely um, developing to become an amazing actor. It's fun. Yeah. It's fun to, to, to see why we do what we do. Did you, so when you were growing up, was there any things that happened to you in your life that you think really impacted you young? Or was it other than moving around? Was there anything else that, I mean, how did you feel with friends? Was there anything socially or life incidences or things that occurred? Yeah, well, I think a lot starts at home, you know, with mm -hmm. our parents as much as it does anywhere else, you know, and, and. I had very, you know, very nice grandparents, you know, but they had their own dynamic, you know, as couples probably did in their generation. Mm -hmm. And then my mother was was sort of of a different generation where it was more freedom and, you know, where there was sort of this idea of being a feminist and and um, even though you weren't quite a feminist because you still saw this sort of old idea of how things were supposed to be. And so I saw my mom going through, through that really interesting time of mm. being independent and being a woman and being a single mother and or, and or going through a divorce during a time when, you know, there were certain ideals to live up to and, mm. and standards and things. And, and kind of wanting the old traditional thing, but then having this new freedom and this new idea and what that meant mm -hmm. and figuring out how to um, 
to balance it. So there was a lot of, you know, that growing up. Like, mm-hmm. okay, watching all the dynamics play out, watching my grandmother and how she dealt with my grandfather and, yeah. and being a woman during her, her time. Mm-hmm. And then my mother during her time. And, um, yeah. and then trying to decide who, you, who I was going to be in sure. my time and, and, and so it was, it was, I mean, that I remember a lot being a sort of dynamic, um, but also just figuring out who you want to be through example of, of at home, but then also at school and like not really fitting into any real specific group yes. as they kind of were at school. I just felt half the time I'd just go to the library with these girls that were kind of didn't fit in because I just Mm -hmm. felt like I wasn't really I didn't I mean by all appearances I fit fit in oh yeah but sort of internally I think we all have that a little bit you know like we don't fit in so at least I did and figuring out who I was and um you know my mother really was encouraging of being an individual and being yourself and having your own mind and and but also being very respectful Mm -hmm. uh at the same time you know because she's you know, from the South, it was very, right. You right. Know, yes, ma'am, no, sir, you know, like that kind of thing. Right. Yes, sir, no, sir. But I see that you, you post things with your yeah. mom. You guys yeah. are still close. Very close. I think close. it's wonderful. Yeah. And it's, it's important to have a strong mother. Yeah. And, you, I, know. you know, I mean, I went through a tough time. I went through, like, a tough time with my mom, too. You know, you go through times with your parents where you're differentiating who you are from who they are. Right. And and that's you know it can be challenging in relation because there's there's blame you know why weren't you this type of mother or that type of mother when you know Jane has that kind of mom or right. you know whatever right. has that kind of mom <laughs> or life or whatever so mm. but I think it's natural as you get older you realize that's just natural you know right. that you're you're comparing you're you know figuring out what's what. And yeah. you re- it's not until later you realize all necessarily the blessings that were there for you. Right. Not always until later. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Can relate to that totally. Yeah. yeah. Have had that relationship with my mother as yeah. well. I went through a few years where I didn't even speak with her. Sure. You know, and needed to process things. Yeah. And now we've said what needed to be said. I'm a mother, so I understand her better. Mm-hmm. I've accepted. I won't even say the word forgive because it's not about forgiveness. I've accepted what's happened and understand it, yeah. you know, what happened, what's happening, and I see myself and all of my strengths and weaknesses, and it's changed everything or transformed our relationship now. Yeah. It's, it's, well, it's it comes not, down to love, you know, yeah, I think our mothers, if totally. we look at what it's like to be a mother and the mistakes that we make and the, the fears that we have and the, alert, you know, figuring it out as we go, we realize, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. my mom was 19 when she had me, like, <laughs> Wow. I did really figuring it all out at that age. Oh and my I'm goodness. surprised she, I mean, she did. And right. now I look at her and I just go, whoa, you did an incredible job considering Absolutely. where you come from and, and you're, you're the age that you had me. And, and so, you know, you have a lot more love and respect, which, all, you know, you come back, circle back and have so much more compassion and love for your, your right. mother. You know, right. when you realize all you have to do is give birth to a child, particularly yeah. naturally, and you yeah. realize, oh, oh my gosh, <laughs> girl, <That's intense. laughs> all is forgiven. Yeah, I don't it's know. Good. You know, whatever you had to do, you do. And you yeah. know, we all do what we have to do to survive. You know, we Absolutely. really do. And if you look at the circumstances in which your parents and their parents and their, but you know, were what they were given to deal with in this world, yeah. you know, some great things, but also challenges. It, it made them who they were. And so if you can see it, sort of step back and see that picture, it helps to have compassion, really. Well, with my mom, it was interesting because I, I had a flash moment where I realized, where I reframed her and everything she did as love mm-hmm. because I had this idea of who she was. You know, I had names in my mind of her that weren't sure. nice. And then when everything she did, all of a sudden I said, okay, I'm going to choose to see that that comes from love everything shifted in our relationship and appreciation yeah I mean the minute I started just sure on, just only really talking about and it, I think most things come back to this whether it's with your yeah. anyone in your your life whether it's your mother your your children your, your co-workers your primary relationship with your partner in life it's it's really comes down and, and one of the biggest lessons I've learned is 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 appreciation and focusing on what is good, what did 
my mother do that was good because yes. I am so thankful that she is my mother in this lifetime and did so many good things. Instead of, mm -hmm. you know, when you're a kid, you focus on like what they did wrong or what they're not oh, yeah. giving you or, you know, because there's a level of you know, discipline there. They have to, you know. Yeah. So it's nice, to, you know, when you get older to really tell them. Yeah. And if you, the, the, the younger we can learn to appreciate, look for the things, it expands that. Obviously, it makes that all the, the more expansive, the more you appreciate it. Absolutely. Nurture that. You look for the blessings and the magic, and all of a sudden you see blessings there and is, magic it's everywhere. Not a funny thing. Yeah. I know. It's kind of fascinating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we knew it when we were three and four, like with right. our little magic wands running around, you know. Yeah. We knew it then. Yeah, yeah. The I process know. of remembering I know, again. I know, I know. So, can you tell us a little about your trip to New York? going to school in New York, the whole process of deciding to be an actor and how you came to that idea. You've touched a little bit about it because your upbringing obviously yeah. had great influences on that already. But how was that experience hmm. coming here? How old were you when you came to New York? When I, well, I came when I, I first was in New York when I was 14. I was modeling for Eileen Ford. So oh. I we just came for the summer to model. Mm -hmm. And then I came back. I went finished high school. I think I graduated when I was 17. Then I came back to New York and I studied acting and I was here for 18 months, almost two years. I was really homesick. I missed home. It was mm. tough, you know, to be on my own and that young. And and so, you know, I did commercials, I did a little modeling, I did a little bit of acting, you know, I kind of did a soap, little bits on soap. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I had an acting teacher that said, you know, you're young and a woman, you should go back and start working really seriously rather than studying and maybe focus on doing theater or something else. In other words, go get in, you know, go get things going. Okay. Get a series, go work, because you can always come back and do theater right. later, and you'll right. have more to sort of bring to it then. Um, and of course, I never came back to do theater. I just kept working. I was like, yeah. this is fun. And just so. Got too much work. Well, it's good. Well, I mean, and I have friends that do a lot of theater, and I hear it's incredible. I haven't done it yet, but um, yeah. So it was just, and I grew up wanting, I was just creative. My, my mom was creative. I was around, you know, creative people. And that's how it was expressed, I guess. I could have gone sort of the more typical route and gone to college and studied law or studied journalism. Those were, th I was definitely, I was interested in journalism a little bit. Mm -hmm. That was one thing, like international journalism, why, in cultures and why different cultures cultivate different things based on where they are or traditions. That has always been fascinating to me. So, still is. <laughs> um, and why we don't take what other people are doing so well and uh, and apply it to our own things, you know, right. like even politically, you know, or environmentally, or educate, you know, in terms of education or health or all of that, you know, to sort of study what everyone's doing that's working, right. and incorporate it. So that was always really fascinating. Still yeah. is. And act. So did you find that you? You had, I mean, the whole process of auditioning, that all mm. like seems so scary to me, yeah. like the whole, the rejection of it, I guess, yes. you know, you're, you're, uh, my understanding, I'm not an actor, so I don't know, yeah. but is that you, you face a lot of rejection before you face acceptance. So yeah. were you equipped for that? How did you, it sounds like you really managed it well. No, I mean, I, 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 I think in the beginning it's, it's hard because it's, it, it's like public speaking or mm -hmm. anything. It's new, and you're in front of a crowd. You're gonna feel nervous and awkward, and you know you're you're gonna think you didn't do well, or you did do well, and it's all a process of. You know, I, I find that everything is just reframing, mm. right? So you reframe it, mm -hmm. and I would. So how do I reframe this for myself? If it's anything in your life that you're sort of uncomfortable with, or how do I reframe it in a way that makes it fun, or I would give myself rewards after I auditioned. I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna go for some frozen <laughs> yogurt with some whatever now. I would mm -hmm. give myself little, or, or I'm gonna go get myself a new cute t-shirt, whatever. I would just reframe it in a way that was making it fun versus right. making it work, because that part was the work, but once I was doing it, I had so much fun. So it was like, how do you get to the part where the fun part happens mm. and a lot of that was okay the auditioning and the this and the dealing with the business and I had a really great acting coach named Jocelyn Jones still love her she's amazing 
Um, and she really was about the business. How do you, it's a business and treating it like a business. So you're an artist, yes, mm -hmm. but you're, this is also a business you're dealing with. You have to interact with people. You have to show up on time. Right. You know, hit your mark, say your line, and give more than the, the next person. Give 10% more right. than what you, you know, and, and being accountable and handling your life. So that helped me too because it went from being a personal thing to a business thing. Mm. So reframing it to be, mm -hmm. okay, I'm, this is also, a, I'm a business person. This isn't just about, it is, a, it, you can be that way as an artist, as a painter. You also have to see it. There's a part of you that has to go, okay, this is also a business. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you choose to go down that path, then you, you, you can be accountable in those ways. So she helped a lot with that. And I and love that. I love, I love what I'm, what I'm hearing specifically, the first part of what you were saying about reframing it to be joyful to That's work what I'm for hearing, you, you know, to work to, for yeah, you to yeah. find the joy so much you know I've worked through that a lot um so much of the striving or doing things and then like so when is the joy coming you know what I mean like when yeah. so I want to get there so that I can be joyful rather than being joyful like you know what I mean like and, and having fun yeah, yeah. yeah I think a lot yeah. of it too I believe is is reframing it in a way that I, I would start going in the room and think, do I want to work with these people? Mm, I love that. Do I like their yes. energy? Do I like yes. what I'm doing? It, just being present enough to say, who are these people too? Mm -hmm. You know, for that moment that I'm in the room and feeling their energy and what that's about. So it's we're choosing all day long. And mm -hmm. so it's empowering yourself to, and I, like you just said, which is so great, is how do I make this joyful through the whole process? And that is reframing it so that you are empowered mm -hmm. and that you are having a good time. So right. I'm having a better time if I walk in and say, you know what, I'm going to do this exactly how I want to do it. I'm going to have a good time. I'm either right for this person or no, I'm not right for this person right. in terms of the work or right for right. this role, I should say. Right. Or even you could say personally, you go on a date, whatever. It's still an audition. Right? People see dates as auditions these days. Yeah. <laughs> true, true. So <laughs> it's no different than whether you go on a date and you're nervous or you get up in public speak and you're nervous or you're going for a job interview or Whatever it is, whatever that new thing is, mm -hmm. you know, what is what experience do I want to have here? And how right. do I empower myself? Because really, and, and I think it was George Clooney, I was working with him on a pilot, and he had said something to the effect of, they want to know you're confident enough to do this. Yeah. So absolutely. if you walk in confident of saying, yeah. I know, I, I mean, I can do this versus walking in going, do you like what I just did? Is it okay? Totally. It's a very different approach to everything, it, whether it's a job, any type of job interview, any yes. type of relationship, any to anything you're going into, it's, it's a much better thing to show up and say, not only can I do this job, but I could run the studio. Right. I, I, I'm, a, <laughs> oh I'm a badass. In fact, I have to tell you, when I was thinking about good. doing your intro, I, I was, in, I was uh. going to, instead of, I don't know what I said, I think I said that she's an incredible human being, but I actually had written down, and she's a badass. Oh, <laughs> I know, I was going to say. badass. Sometimes. Well, you are such a badass. Oh. I love it. I, I mean, so yes, sweet. you are such a badass. Thank you. I love it. Um, so that's amazing and the other piece of what you said which I really appreciated that there is that piece of you need to show up and do things and what I heard is have the discipline to kind of back up what you're doing so this idea you know a lot of what I, what I see a lot of times um, in the whole idea of manifesting things in your life is this idea that you can just kind of sit in your room and say, I want this and just stay there and do nothing. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, you know, and that's it. And I don't know, maybe that could happen. I'm not saying it couldn't, but following the breadcrumbs and doing the next right thing. And sometimes mm -hmm. those next right things aren't necessarily things you're going to love doing, but you know, they're the right thing. Right. Uh, if that makes any sense. That's yes. what I was hearing from what well, you were saying. You had an again, amazing it's, coach it's, telling you that. It's making, it's, it's how do I make this fun for myself, yeah. right? So let's, and what will happen is by making it fun for yourself, you'll attract the next right thing. Yeah. So even if you're in a job right now that you don't love or you're mm. going to an audition and you're nervous or a new job interview or a date or let's, you know, all these situations where we get butterflies in our hands and we're like, ah, mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing or I don't um, 
is, you know, how do I make this fun and and reframe it in a way that I'm comfortable? So if mm. you're going on a date or you're doing, you reframe it in a way that says, you know, how would this, this would be comfortable if I just saw this person as a human being and a friend? Mm -hmm. This isn't a date. This is just meeting someone new. Do I like them? What's going on physically when I meet this person? Mm -hmm. Do I feel comfortable? Do I, you know, listening to our bodies and being, a lot of the time we step out of ourselves. Yes. We step literally. We were I mean, talking we're about not the, even we ourselves. give away our power. We go in we a room and we, you know, yeah. yeah. Instead of just really saying, how can I be the most centered and grounded, and yeah. how do I get there to mm. make this fun? And so, whether it was auditioning, it would be like, I'm going to go in and have a good time. Right. If I get yeah. it, great. Yeah. If I don't, I, I'm going to learn something. Either way, I'm going to go have a good experience for myself. And I think it's the same with everything. You go to have a good experience for yourself. Yes. And enjoy it. I mean, you're obviously open and receptive to the other people in the room, and you're, you know, you're workable and you're professional and all of these things. Mm -hmm. You're also going into it saying, I'm going to have a good time with this. Right. Because yes. It's, because really, this is fun. This isn't, this is acting. <laughs> Yeah, well, right. If, yeah, that's a really good way this to reframe it because you're like, this is it's like acting. Okay, this is not supposed to be so painful. But it's there, acting. It, there is a point too where allowing things to happen because there's, you know, I love writing affirmations and love um, this idea of creating it. Right, so you're creating it because it also gives you confidence. So the more you write, that you know, when you're particularly you're starting out, I'm a working actress. I love I mm -hmm. love what I do. I'm working with really wonderful people in every aspect of your life, whether it's your work, mm -hmm. your relationships, again, your family, my children are healthy, happy, holy, divinely guided, protected. Whatever these things mm -hmm. are, it's it helps too when you go in the room or you are out walking. The more specific we can be in the I am perfect, whole, and complete. And it does, regardless of anything else. Yeah. Nothing needs to happen in my day. Right. That's just the, the truth. Right. So going from there, you know, to even do a meditation where you have everything. You have the success already. You have the money. You have the love. You have everything. Yeah. Is a really interesting meditation. Mm. Because like you said, yes, you can't just sit in a room maybe... Maybe, and who knows? And meditate and say, oh, it's <laughs> yeah. going to come knocking on my door, which is totally possible. It is. Mm -hmm. it, it, and yet at the same time, what helps is to, to visualize, to create through your imagination, mm -hmm. through your feeling body, yeah. all of that. I, I Absolutely. You know, when I started realizing that I needed to change, it actually was, I, I made perfect. this. perfect. Yes. Oh, I love you. Well, you I, are perfect. You know what it was? I wanted to be more joyful. Yes. And so I saw things that I wanted to do that gave me joy. Ah, I love it. Yeah, okay. I'm reframing. Yeah, <laughs> that's it's really, true. you know. And uh, was, I made this decision that I was going to get up every morning at 6 a.m. and listen to this visualization meditation oh, nice. that took me through, um, parts of my life and didn't tell me what they were going to look like. It was almost like my own private video game. And I started doing it every morning. I love getting up and I love the ritual of having my cup of coffee ready for me and like sitting with a candle. But it was so fascinating because it speaks to what you're talking about, I think, to an extent, because I, I remember beginning it, the ideas that I had, and then as I did it each morning, they expanded mm -hmm. and they shifted. And then what was possible became bigger got and bigger, bigger and yeah. bigger. And then magical stuff just started happening mm -hmm. because it was, it's, I mean, it's exactly what you, you were taking about. Because you were taking time about. for yourself. I, I was taking the time and allowing. I get busy. And I, this is so good. I'm so glad you're saying this today <laughs> because I can tend to just get busy. Mm-hmm. Right? I think everyone can. <laughs> and, and go, 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 and think that that is being productive when we can be just as productive doing what you're saying. And I think the part of it, of sitting at home and, and having it arrive or show up, is the part that you just mentioned, which is the ritual. You know, if you're centered, you're visualizing, you're expanding your ideas of what's possible, um, you're focused on what brings you joy, I mean, certainly, if you go into any room with that energy, right. you're going to have a lot more to offer, and people are going to feel it. So I think part of it is doing that work, the inner work at home yeah. of 
filling your your you know nurturing yourself with all of that good stuff and the more we take the time for ourselves I mean I don't even take the time to brush my hair half the time so yeah I don't brush my hair either right (laughs) my husband's always like don't women brush their hair how do do they get anything done (laughs) oh my god really funny no but I'm always been like that Tom you know running around you know just I'm the same playing whatever yeah. But, but two, to develop these other sides of ourselves, because I think of that too. And it, a lot of it's what we were talking about earlier, about growing up and being like, well, you're going to like me anyway, whether I brush my hair or I don't brush my hair. Right. And right. it's a defensive thing when you, you grow up and want people to like you for you. Yes. Like, okay, I don't have to be this or that according to what society says I have to be. Like we were talking about, you know, well, smile, you're this or that. Yeah. But really, it's about the empowerment of ourselves and to be the most beautiful we can be. And when women are in their power, yes, the whole world is in a better place, right? Yes. We're talking about men are really good with like the action stuff and women are really good with the, with the creating the joy. And the reason they, people want us smiling, whether it's our children, our family, our husband or whatever, yes, okay, we can see it as sexist and like, okay, I don't want to have to smile all day for everyone or be right. on. But it's also a symbol of when mama's happy, we're all happy. Right. And when mama's centered and in her power and joyful and loving herself, you know, feeling good, feeling whatever it is, whether it's sexy or just content or beautiful or well, mm-hmm. over, overall wellness, yeah. our divine energy, that feminine, beautiful, loving, nurturing, divine energy where we can, we're not afraid to ask in a very loving way for the things we need and want. And this is, it's, it's part of that. It's taking the time, and I certainly could do more of this, taking more time to be in that space. Um, mm. That's the space where things get done, even yeah. with less running around. Yes. So with l- more manifestation power, you know, it's like the more we are in our, when we're centered and empowered and we take the time to do what you're talking about, which is light the candle, mm. have the cup of tea, get quiet, go within, you know, let our hair down, right. allow uh. ourselves to just not have to be everything for everyone, but be, be what we need to be for ourselves then we have something to offer. You know, Absolutely. Then we really have something to offer. And I said, you know, certainly could develop more of those things and think about developing more of that time right. for, for that. We all, I mean, goodness, we all can. It's, uh, it's, it's like, I think of it as like kind of building a muscle. It's my, it's my muscle, you know, yeah. like a bodybuilder, you know? And um, it's interesting because recently my husband has seen this and I'm actually really happy because we've had a few times where we needed something really fast and and it was kind of seemed like impossible. Right. And, and he became your superhero. And well, <laughs> yes, he's always <laughs> my is. superhero. He, but is, he, he, he used is. his superhero powers. Uh, he he did. And but what was the beautiful thing of the masculine and feminine is I, I created the space and then he created the Action. Action. So I said, honey, it's all going to fall into line perfectly and yeah. magically. Yeah. What we need is going to happen. And then it was like, okay, then he could say, oh, well, maybe we need to contact this person to get this. And then, of course, we got it. You know, it was... It, it was, op- gave the space for ideas to come through. For yeah. that balance of, like, of the... of For me, it's really a lot of the masculine and feminine. I, I have a lot of this, like, you were talking about this stuff coming in a very defensive very protective thing around me and i'm learning as i'm finding and as i'm finding my joyful voice i'm learning that i can do those things i can do everything and i can also choose to allow my husband and the people around me to do things too Mm -hmm. and to take care of me Mm -hmm. like that I'll tell you, when I was younger, because of the way my parents, re- you know, what yeah. I assumed, I was like, no, 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 no man's going to take, I'm taking care of me, you know. Well, I think that's a normal thing, and particularly yeah. in our generation, because yeah. we went through times, I mean, my mother got divorced, and there was no child support, and she was with kids and had to mm-hmm. take care of her, too, you know, but, I think, you know, we've, we we grew up having to sort of deal in that way sometimes, where you just feel like, okay, and, and 
a desire to really be loved and seen for yourself, right? So mm -hmm. not all these other things. We Look, we all survive in different ways, no matter how it is, how it looks. <laughs> We're all, right. you know, figuring it out as, as we go. And it, it, what we were talking about earlier, too, is it comes back to love. So more mm -hmm. love for ourselves, more love for our parents and that they did their best, and love for the people around us. But mainly it really starts with loving ourselves and taking the time to, to take care of ourselves. It's so funny because <laughs> I know my husband said this to you before we started, but like this morning I saw a quote that you posted. Yeah. Um, every situation in your life is teaching you how to love. Yeah. And I just heard it and I was like, that is the perfect quote for Kelly because Aww. you literally exude love. Aww. I you, you exude massive love. Can you please tell us your secret? Yes. Secret. <laughs> tell us secret. the secret. I wish I knew the tell secret. Tell us the secret. <laughs> the secret is, well, there's that great book called The Secret. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And it's a great book. It is a, a secret. It's not a secret anymore because I think <laughs> no. it's a bestseller. But it's, I, I really do think it's about going back to, to appreciating. Mm. The more we appreciate and love and I've, I mean, I've gone, you know, I'm just as, probably as hard as on myself as everyone is. You know, we're our own critic and this and that. But I do believe the only thing that really makes sense is love. Yeah. It's just the only thing that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I'll post quotes about love and also people say, well, in my relation, you know, but why am I not with a, you know, relation? Mm. Because that's not the love that I'm talking about always. The love... No. It's, it's an energy of love. It's blessing people. It's instead of judging them, bless them, you know, mm -hmm. because not for them, for you. Oh, yes. <laughs> because you'll be more radiant. You will, you will radiate love, which will attract everything that you want in your life. Well, as I judge others, so, I judge myself. Right. And Much so, more harshly. <laughs> right. So the more yeah. we can bless everyone, mm -hmm. not just when they sneeze, mm -hmm. bless everyone <laughs> all day long, you know, bless the taxi driver, bless the guy, the girl at the grocery store, the doorman when you're going in and out, you know, just, that's the, it's an energy, it's a vibration of love, mm -hmm. and certainly we come in and out of it, you know, but when, I, when I'm confused or I'm worried or I'm stressed, because I've gotten into my thinking mind about things or worried, you know, mm -hmm. from, which is, or I'm not appreciating things or ingratitude, which is all that it is, the minute right. you're out of that, yeah. It's 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 the only thing, yeah, that works. I love it. It's so simple. <laughs> it's so simple, so simple yet <laughs> not always that easy. Yeah. Um. So, so can we tell us a little bit about so you gossip girl when okay. you got Lily, mm -hmm. and at the same time you became mother. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. How was that? Like, how was that whole? It was super empowering because I think becoming a mother is incredibly empowering. And, um, I mean, it's exhausting and, and right. a lot of other things too, but it's, it's an empowering thing to, mm -hmm. to give birth and to, to know that you, that there's this child in the world. It's such a beautiful, in, in a beautiful way, I'm empowering, you know? Yeah. So, and it puts a lot in perspective really fast. I used to do a lot of homework on my scenes before I'd go to work. And then I was like, nope, I was up breastfeeding. I've had three hours <laughs> sleep and I'm learning my lines as we go today. So please run them with me a I lot. I love it. Put some more eye drops in, you know, and we're going to figure this out. And sometimes the best work is done that way, right? Sure. Because you're just there. Well, you're just Lily so was friendly. a badass. So I don't know She's if that maybe, you character. know, she was a great character. So yeah. I'm sure you brought that in. Well, she, you know, she was written that way. But also, I just felt that there hadn't been a real matriarch character. Mm -hmm. And, or as a mother, right? right. Just, and so, and to me, that's what I would you know, it, it was, so, God, so many things. It was so many things in going into that character, uh, partly just my mother and her friends growing up, and partly what is a matriarch and what does that mean to me, and mm -hmm. who is that woman today? Mm -hmm. And 
who is that as a mother? Who is that in her relationships? On and on. I'm like, I forget we're on camera, and I'm like, I'm, like, I'm doing a podcast today. We're filming this, and we're both like, like brushing our I noses, <laughs> like slouching <laughs> down. There's the camera there, and here I am. Um, so it's all good. Right, it's all good. So, but yeah, but, you know, the, uh, characters are opportunities to be the parts of ourselves that maybe we can't express every day, all day, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's like the artist's way where you say, okay, there's so many different aspects to all of us. How do I get all of those aspects fulfilled? And how do I incorporate those aspects? How do I weave that into my life, you know? Um, that's the magic carpet ride right there. Is mm -hmm. How do I create a carpet that, ha you know, a weave that has ev all these magical threads of what of who I am. Mm -hmm. And it, it comes in through, like we, so many people are talking about ancestral stuff now, mm -hmm. right? It's, it comes mm -hmm. from your DNA. It comes from your life experiences. It comes from your hopes and dreams that are completely separate from your family and your ancestors that you're supposed to carry on. It's listening. Um all the learning that we do, all the evolving that we do. Right. It, it, look, it all comes back to magic at the end oh, of the yes. day. It does. It does. It is, because, yeah. and it's simple. It's asking, how often do we take the time? Yeah. We worry, we stress, we demand, we blah, 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 for hours about stuff. Yeah. And really, how often do we just get quiet and say, could I please have an improvement in my health? Right. Or can I please show me the way to do this? This is my desire. How do I get there? Would you please show me the way and help guide me? What do I need to do here? You know, um, yeah. and it's, it's not really like out there magic. Like when I say magic and unicorns and all that, but it <laughs> really works magic. So it's so simple. Somebody was just telling me recently um, what I found it very profound. She said, if you start asking, and for her it was asking your ancestors, asking God for, for direction, you will get the direction. If you forget to ask, then ancestors or God will send people to give you mm. the message. And so she's like, why don't you just go the direct line? Yes. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, I had chills. I was like, wow. And there this, is a direct line. There is a direct line. But this year, I have been blessed with so many people that have come to me with mm. these messages. Mm -hmm. And now I'm ready to go for the direct line. Like, I've been sort of doing the direct line. But now I'm kind of really like, OK, yeah, I see the magic. And anyway, I found it. I'm still kind of absorbing it. So maybe you can help me with it. Like, when she said it, it really hit me. Like, I was like, wow, OK. And I still have to process through it. But I thought it was kind of a beautiful beautiful thought it is you know well there's there's you know the matrix right we're in this sort of mm -hmm. um i mean i was even i mean thinking during the holidays i was thinking you know here we are we have this holiday at the end of the year and then we have another holiday and then they take that away and we have another holiday we're even so holiday programmed and so holiday we're so knows to this we just go along mm -hmm. even when we think we're not going along Absolutely. there's so much that we don't we don't question our, we don't question the ordinary right um right and how we're so guided by the economy or by these holidays or by what we're told how we're supposed to be in our particular culture or society or tradition you know it's just there's so much stuff that's the reason getting quiet that's the reason mm. lighting the candle is so important because our own guidance and our the, the line the connection to source or god or whatever you want to call the the infinite intelligence um that is It's so simple, but it, if, if everyone did that, the world would not be able to exist as it is and as we see it today. Absolutely. So, and mm. what we're seeing today uh, is caused by collective thought 
guided collective thought. So if we can have a new guided collective thought and envision something different, we can create that for sure. And it starts with our own life, right? So it starts mm -hmm. with our own um, day, right. whatever it is. Just less explaining, talking, defending, demanding, and more getting quiet, writing, getting more specific, more purposeful, mm -hmm. more kind, loving, soft, yeah. right, all these things, and yeah. taking really taking care of ourselves because we don't have anything to offer anyone unless we're doing this. <laughs> really. No, no, that's really. absolutely I mean, the we, truth. We're all over-talked. Well, I just treat ca everything. I create chaos. That's, I mean, that's, if I'm walking into a room, I'm either creating love or I'm creating chaos. Mm. For, there really is no in between for me because mm. I, I tend to affect the room. Like I haven't, you know, I just do stuff, you know, I'm, I'm also a doer, you know, so um, it's something I've thought about, you know, I go into a space and things aren't working out, something I've realized recently aren't working out the way I, I like and I don't feel like this person is, is, you know, jiving with me and this and that and it's just recently that I realized, yeah, honey, so just change the story, change what's going on you're affecting your this is your story mm -hmm. you know and it's exactly what i'm hearing you say it's about stopping and getting conscious and for me it's been about getting clear mm -hmm. really clear um and when i get into that space then like we said before, miraculously, relationships that didn't work all of a sudden start to work better. Mm -hmm. I feel energetically people around me that I used to think didn't like me are drawn to me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so simple, and yet, you know, for a long time, I was unaware, you know, so that's okay. I was evolving into understanding it now, and there's definitely moments where I still, like, I'm not on this, I'm not always aware of this you know I get right. it sometimes it comes to me after well, we've had years of programming in yeah. a very different way yeah so it takes a minute right right yeah and to be kind to ourselves and say exactly the fact yes. that I have a desire to do this and and I'm doing my best each day to do it is is the greatest thing ever because if we can manage our energy and um, stay alkaline and manage our energy and and all in every in as many ways as we can and do things that create more love and loving energy I mean things do change yeah because like everyone's had their 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 life and those people that sometimes we think oh they don't like us or this or that they're responding to their own sure. survival instincts and what they've had to survive in their life and then there then you realize there's compassion i mean when my kids say oh there's this kid at school and he's always hitting everybody and i said well you know he may have an older brother that hits him or he well, may very have, likely <laughs> very <laughs> likely or he may have yeah. parents that are fighting at home and he doesn't know what else to do and yeah. wouldn't you feel kind of bad giving him a hard time if that's what he was already suffering because you know people aren't mean to people that aren't already you know they mean because they've suffered yeah or somebody's n has not been nice to them so not that that's an excuse but it does give you perspective and compassion for for you know you can always have compassion. Yeah. Doesn't mean you have to allow people to. It's not about letting someone abuse you or. But, it, but compa it, for me, compassion is different. The compassion yeah. is the perspective you have that you don't need to feed. The hurt. Right. Right. You know, you don't have to feed the hurt. You don't have to allow the hurt to necessarily damage you, mm -hmm. but you don't have to feed the hurt in order to defend yourself because it's, it's already a very weak it's just vibration. Awareness. It's you just. Know? It's a. All yeah. of it's just awareness. Yeah. So during this time, becoming a mother, this amazing, iconic role in Gossip Girl, you also filed for divorce. Yeah. Yeah. And then proceeded to inspire <laughs> publicly people <laughs> by the grace with which you... Oh, I don't know how great that is. Oh, thank yes. You. Managed through something pretty intense. Yeah. Can didn't feel graceful. Well, no. <laughs> I'm sure it didn't feel I graceful. Didn't feel graceful. <laughs> but yes. Um, 
I just have so much love for children, mm. so much love for children, and so much love for um, my children, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like, you know, when you have your heart broken in any way in life, it takes time to heal, it takes time. And, you know, I wish, I, I learned a lot. I learned a whole lot. I made mistakes and I, I listened to a lot of different people with a lot of different advice and I was, you know, I panicked at moments. It was a really, because I didn't know this type of thing could happen. You know, I think when you're, when you're in a new situation where you just, sort of the unimaginable is happening and you think, I, I don't, you, you don't know how to respond. Hmm. So it, uh, for me, I mean, I, a lot of what came out of it, the grace for me that came out of it was, was learning a different way of being, really, to survive. Mm -hmm. And to realize that on, uh, and also perspective that, okay, this is absolutely crazy in my world, what's going on here. And yet people, I mean, are dealing with so many other crazy things too in the world. How do we deal with anything, right? So mm -hmm. I have my thing. You have your, everyone has their version of something in their life, whatever it is that right. feels out of control, feels um, unjust. Right. And, um, and there's, there's anytime there's, you know, any children suffering or whatever, mm -hmm, you know. So mm -hmm. how do you turn all of this? And really, and especially when you're in love, you're also in love. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, it's, it's how, you know, the relationship dynamic of being in love with someone and thinking, oh, my gosh, this, I really went into this believing this was, was something. And um, so, you, you know, you give yourself a hard time, you know, you, mm -hmm. you feel out of control. And, again, you listen to people that really know a lot less than you do, right. even though you're paying them a lot of money. Because the truth is you know in your it, – it really, you learn to trust yourself because – when you listen to other people, sometimes you make mistakes too. Mm -hmm. And um, mm. you know, you, you, a lot of what helped me was reading like Abraham Hicks and The mm -hmm. Secret and how do you, a, a lot of it was, if I had managed all of the chaos with meditate, getting quiet, Mm. which is the opposite thing you want to do. Right. It's the opposite thing you want to do. Well, you're in you fight or flight. Know. You're I mean, in at that like point, survival it's, mode. Yeah, you know, yeah. when you're in survival mode on any level, whatever yeah. that is, yeah. you know, and what, what I got was, oh, you know, this letting go, this idea of letting go and a meditation or prayer or asking or, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to be next to someone to, to be next to someone mm -hmm. energetically. You can send your energy mm -hmm. to people. Mm -hmm. And this is, there's so many of these things that we would think would be kooky or you talk about that are kind of new agey or whatever. But they're not new agey. They're old agey. Right. <laughs> old sagey. Right. Yeah. They're old sagey. Yeah. Is what they they're are. They're forgotten new things they're that are coming sagey, back. Right. Which is, which is energy and vibration all these these words that we're using now which are i'm sure have been used for a long time mm. how do you manage your energy in situations it's like you know what they say when you're driving a car and the tire pop you know your first instinct is to drive mm. they say drive into the, the 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 opposite direction you would drive into what is it i don't know how, what is that when you're you driving do, what, you i'm not sure <laughs> I, you know, I live in New York City, yeah, and I never drive, drive anymore. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I have to do a taxi driver. But if I understand what, you, the opposite of what you yeah, should but, do. Yeah, but what it is, like, you're supposed to turn into the, the thing. I don't know. People listening will know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, about you guys even will know. I am not articulating it beautifully. But it's almost like sometimes you, when you get, you know, you almost have to have an opposite reaction. When you get yes. depressed, don't listen to depressed music. Listen to upbeat music. Keep your energy up. You know, it's the same Absolutely. with, you know, all these things. Even though people are saying, oh, this is a you have to keep your energy up and there was a great woman healer that I went to save a simmer in Kalsa she calls the Sikh lady in LA hmm. and this was all going on and she just saw it she was like oh 
And she so wisely said, what I want you to do, if you can, is just visualize your kids being happy and healthy, mm. and them with you, and this and that, and everything working out beautifully. And had I probably spent more time doing that instead of being in survival mode, which I did do a lot of it, and that's probably I know you how did. I got through. Oh, yeah. But and even just visualizing all day how you want it to be, not mm -hmm. how it is. Mm -hmm. How it, you know, there's there's mm -hmm. the how it is, and you can go over and over and over. It's like the computer. There's that thing yep. spinning, and you can just keep spinning. Or you can, even when you feel you have no power or no strength or no control, what you, the control that you do have is your own creative mind and your own feeling body. So to visualize things working out and send, sending good energy the way, to where it needs to go mm -hmm. is incredible. I mean, a mother sending energy to a child is very powerful no matter where they are at any time in the day. Right. And the, you know, even turning any worry into that, okay, so there's a worry, how do I turn that into an affirmation either spoken to to my children and or energetically sending them a certain mm -hmm. energy and even to the courts to to you know your ex-husband you're this you're that and it doesn't work all day every day right but if you're getting there and you're doing that more and more and I realize in every aspect of our lives we can do that and it's yeah. not something we're necessarily taught and ha it's important to teach that yes because it's more powerful than the alternative and the alternative Absolutely. is not good so whether it's healing or what is that? And there's a movie that's up for an Oscar this year about the Chinese, I think it's the Chinese, is it Chinese family who um, won't tell the grandmother she's dying. And it's a tradition. Okay. So the grandmother's dying, she has cancer, and they all have to, to and they, the doctor even says, oh, no, no, you're fine. The results are fine, even though she has like six months of just like. Right. And so they all act like nothing's wrong, and they don't tell her that she has this thing. Yeah. And, you know, she coughs every once in a while, and everyone goes, oh, right. and the, you know, and everyone's in tears because they're trying to keep it together because they know they may lose, the, and everything becomes very precious, right. and every minute with her becomes, and people do the extraordinary things they wouldn't normally do because they know she may. Well, and the story, and it's based on a true story, that woman's still alive. I could guess the ending. <laughs> I could guess. I, I didn't want to say it while so you were talking, really, but I was like, It's of not course. denial of per se, of but course. it is a certain level of saying, you know what? Yep. The minute we hear we have something or something negative, we Absolutely. take it on. Absolutely. Right? So if you don't sort of allow it into your energy field mm -hmm. and you don't label it and associate it and go down that road, I'm not saying it's the cure for everything, but it certainly is an interesting, the other way, we know the result. Exactly. Therefore, why not try something different, which is yeah. let's just not, and if you don't know, yeah. your body and your cells don't go into believing it and knowing Absolutely. it. It's like my, that great thing about the bear in the woods. You know, when you're out camping, there could be a, you think there's a bear outside of your tent. Well, whether there is a bear or there isn't a bear, your body reacts the same way. Abs yeah, it doesn't know the, it doesn't know <laughs> it the difference. It still reacts it as if the there's difference. a bear. And you can kind of go, okay, there's no bear. I just heard a little cry. Well, it's the same thing, I think, with, with healing ourselves mm -hmm. or our ability to say, okay, we'll b believe it until it is real or we will not, we're not going to go there. Well, it's, it's a funny thing you mentioned that because there's this, I listened to this, I remember testimonial from this woman and it was a public thing and she, it was so, it was definitely factual and she had terminal cancer and she decided, she wrote on a piece of paper a date and she said, I'm healed. And she said, everything I did from that moment on, every word I said, every thought I had, no matter how horrible I felt, yeah. I said, I'm healed. Somebody asked me, I'd say, I'm healed. Yeah. And guess what? Three months later, the cancer was completely gone. Yeah. And I, I remember hearing that and being as, as astounded as I was, I also knew it was truth. Like mm -hmm. I was like, that is absolutely, like you said, the truth about everything in my life. So it's funny because, you know, as I'm walking in this, it, I think about this when people ask you how you are, you know, if I'm tired and I'm not doing well, you know, I don't want to be like fakey Fakerson walking around being like, I'm great all the time. But at the same time, I'm like, well, what's going to benefit my well-being? Is sitting and telling them how horrible everything is 
and my sob story, is that going to help me? No, you're going to attract more of it. I'm going to attract more of it. So really, at this point, I don't care. Like, and then I'm they're like, going to start talking about their stuff that's all bad, too. Yeah. And then you're all going to be yeah. in it together. It's so, so I've kind of given up caring. Like, if yeah. I look like a fakey Fagerson, I don't really right. care. Right. Like, now right. I'm just like, you know what? No matter what's going on, I'm doing great. How are you? Right, right. You know, and that is different. It, it doesn't feed life into right. the things I don't want. Yep. It feeds life into the things I want and That's shifts where me. your choice is. You That's know. where your power is. Absolutely. So going back to it, you are an amazing mother. Aww. I know this for a fact. And Thank I can you. hear that the, the experiences of the last what, 10, 13 years yeah. that has had a big impact on you as a mother. Yeah. Your voice as a mother, the way you are. You've spoken a little bit about that. Is there anything else you wanted to share on that topic? Because I... I know you, your children like are so lucky. Aww, I mean, thank you. yeah. <laughs> I'm lucky. I'm lucky. Well, I'm yeah, lucky they there. chose me. I, I always tell them, I'm just just so flattered you chose me to be your mom in this lifetime. And, mm. and how can I be the best mom for you? You know, and it's, um, you know, it's just love. My kids know that I love them. And, mm. you know, I think we, I always knew I was loved growing up, no matter what was going on. My mother, I always knew my mother loved me. And I think love and affection and all of that's a very healing. And it's also empowering to say, you know, I tell my kids, look, all of this is your Jedi training. We mm -hmm. all have our Jedi training. I had mine with my family. You have yours with your family. We all have, um, it, it's again how do you reframe it so that you realize that it's empowering it's an empowering situation I mean they're going to be able to deal with so many things in their life in such a powerful way right. and have such a different perspective and it's and again it's you can look at the negative and look at the bad and toot your horn to that or you can look at the good and the upsides of things and toot your horn to that and you're going to have two very different feelings going through your body all day you're going to carry around two very different energies, and you're going to have two very different results. Mm -hmm. So all day, that's what we're choosing. Right. All day long with thoughts we're thinking, and I know this has been said a million times, but it's true. With all, with everything all day, we think we're trying to control the things we can't control, and we're not controlling what we can control. <laughs> right. So if we can just skip that, if we can right. stop trying to control everyone else right. and the world and our ex-husbands and our children and our this and our that and our work, and our, if we can stop trying to control all of that mm -hmm. and just harmonize our energy and get mm -hmm. into a place of being able to receive the good, just being even able to allow it in. We're so much sometimes in resistance and mm -hmm. all this stuff to everything. Instead, just what I can control is that when my children look at me, I'm happy and mm -hmm. that I love them and I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. And that I say to them, what would be the best thing in the world, the best gift you could give me as a mother is that you feel good mm -hmm. and that you're doing well. And the best gift I know I can give you as a mother is to do the same. Mm -hmm. So how, you know, you do what you need to do, I'll do what I need to do, and we'll be there to support each other because we'll be strong enough to be there mm -hmm. to support each other. Mm -hmm. If we're all a mess, there's nothing anybody can do, right? And that's yeah. no different than your relationship with your partner in life, you know, to expect them to be you know, the best thing we, the best gift we can give someone is to be happy ourselves. Right. Because that's the reflection they're getting back is somebody that knows what they want, takes right. care of themselves, loves themselves, who's a very clear uh, communicator of their needs in a loving way. Right. Um, and, a pr and being able to appreciate the person sitting across from you. Right. All the beauty. Mm is there right it's all right there everything is right. in front of you all the beauty and we're we're distracted by nonsense well it's funny Complete because nonsense <laughs> the next thing i was gonna i was going to ask you was you know what do you think are the myths around 
coming into your own and finding your voice, and you're answering it already, basically, you well, know, by what your you're inner saying. voice. It's not even yeah. that, I mean, we all have a voice, right? Right. But if you don't the have your voice. inner voice well, first, that's it. Yeah. There is, you know, right. it's really but finding your... Those myths about yeah. that, I mean, I hear you answering it already, like, that it's kind of counterintuitive, in a sense, you know, you think that if I am in my power and I'm, that the guy is going to run away or this is going to happen. And in fact, it's the opposite. Mm. It's, it's really not that scary. Hope he scary. runs away if he's going well, to run away. You know the, what I'm The saying? wrong one like is going to run away. The one that's meant to be with you is going to mm. stay. But it's often the opposite. I mean, I don't know if you can speak to that. Just, I'm always wondering, you know, uh, the question of, it seems so scary sometimes, you know, you, to listen to that voice. There's that voice. We all have it. Sometimes we tune it out. Um, sometimes we're not even aware because, because we're, we we're raised to listen to everybody. Everybody else. At school we're right. raised. Our, we listen to the babysitter, listen to the parents, listen to the older people, listen to your grandparents. Right. You know, instead of saying listen to yourself is what we should be telling our right. children. Well, what is what is your inner guidance system tell you? What is your intuition telling you? What do you what do you right. believe to be true for you? These are the conversations to have with your right. children. Right. What but do it, you yeah. what do you believe I should do? Right. Well, and I love every time because I ask you true. something, you always write. I love it the last time I told my husband, I asked you a question about something and you wrote back, well, what do you think you should do? And I was like, this is a Well, this you is know the better than I, I do. I mean, I, I know. I love that. It's I love true. that. But it's, but it's true. You're right. It's true. I mean, it's nice to have someone to bounce things off of. Sure. I mean, that's a difference, right? And hopefully yeah. that person's saying, well, what would make you feel <laughs> exactly. really good? And what, what... What you know? What do you want to do? What would be the most fun? Right. Really, because right. that's that's what a good friend or or coach or whatever lover will will say is well, what would make you just light up, so happy, be so happy? Right. You know, that's it. And the same with our kids. What 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 do you want to do? How can I support it in a way that's you know age appropriate for you? Right. You know. So, you know, as I've been developing the, this podcast, I've had the same question keep coming up okay. a lot. And it's, I feel like, or maybe it's my intuition is telling me that there needs to be a shift. I want to shift. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. What do I do first? How do I do this? This feeling of being really overwhelmed with sure. what's the first thing I can do. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if you have, if someone asked you that question, what would you say to them? Because I always, I'm thinking and kind of like contemplating what, what, what is the best thing to guide them to themselves in that, to answer that question. Huh. Well, <laughs> anything new is overwhelming, if, right. particularly if you don't know about it, right? right. Anything is going to be overwhelming. Right. So, you, you know, you figure it out as you go and you, you visualize as much of it as you can that feels good. The, the idea mm -hmm. is to think about something as long as it feels good. And mm -hmm. then the minute it doesn't feel good anymore, turn your attention to something else and think about it for as long as it feels good. Right. And then go back to that other thing. Mm -hmm. It's creative play, right? So mm -hmm. what happens is we think about this idea, oh, I'm gonna start a business. It's gonna be great. Mm -hmm. I got this, I got this, da, da, da. and then all of a sudden you start going, okay, but then I need to find out who this is, and I don't know how to do this, and I don't know how to do that. And you go down this road of just like, so you ah. never do it because you don't right. know how to do all this stuff. Right. Instead of, that's what's so great about kids, and I think kids should, <laughs> should run the world <laughs> for like child labor. That's not what I'm saying. But I do think that kids should be asked and supported and creative endeavors earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. businesses mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be businesses like we know businesses but that they learn because there's they we, we wait so long to explore yeah. these things and then as adults we feel like we're if we don't know everything that's bad mm -hmm. it's bad not to know everything mm -hmm. we don't ask questions anymore because we should know that we're an adult there's so many things I have no idea I mean I'm an actress I, I sit with my friends that have real jobs <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like like corporate jobs. I don't mean real. Job. I have a real job, but you know, like I'm like, well, what is it like to do that? <laughs> to manage all those people, or to to have you know board meetings, or to mm -hmm. to do what they do all day. It's fascinating mm -hmm. to me, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Because I know what I do and, and how it works, just like it's fascinating to other people. You know, how does that work? What's it like being on a set? What's it like to, you know, I'm the same with other people and their jobs and what they do and their abilities. But yeah. think about it until it's fun and make lists. Mm. And again, do until it's fun. Make the calls you want to make today. So let's say you think, okay, what do I need? What would be fun to learn about here? I need to figure out if I want to make dresses like manufacturers and labels and all. The, and just do the part that's fun for that day. Mm. So it's like a little, I think it's a lot of it is just, we don't have to have every answer to everything today. That's great advice. The stuff that's fun, do, do that. Do get up in the morning yeah. and say, what part of this mm -hmm. would be fun for mm -hmm. me today? Mm -hmm. Period. And what can I do that's fun today? Right. What can I do? Can I do something that's, what can I do for myself? that's nice today right whatever it is right you know and then you'll find that like every day of your life becomes kind of fun I mean you are an adult you're allowed to do what you, know, allowed you can to have, have a fun. cookie for lunch <laughs> exactly. you could go to bed what time you want to go to bed you can and find there's, yourself you know, stuff. there's some fun <laughs> stuff about being an adult yes. there is oh yes you can start a business and your parents aren't <laughs> going to tell you and you can't do it or you can do this you can yeah so it's it's into the play, a lot of it is the play, and right. I'm guilty. I mean, I need to play more. I t I tend to be a bit serious. I can get serious about things, so I, I won't start doing that. Or you don't right. want to, you know, you're even as an actor, as as a woman, you know, you're seen in a certain light, mm -hmm. or certain characters, mm -hmm. or certain ways. So you're like, well, if I do that, everyone's gonna. That's really off brand for Kelly because mm. that's so not her. Right. Right. When there's so many sides to myself that I, you know, that uh -huh. I have that maybe I go, well, God, if I, yeah, if I put that dirty joke on there, it's not going to go with my <laughs> inspirational quote. But I do laugh at dirty jokes. I know. And I laugh I, mostly on Lisa Renna's page. Like she's doing like, she, you know, like my friends that do stuff that's a little more provocative and fun. I'm like, oh, that looks like fun. But oh, my, they, people would think they came to the wrong Instagram feed. I'd be like, what? Kelly dancing on tables after having like... Oh, I want that. It would just be like, you know what I mean? I it want that. Like, what? So it's, a lot of it is sort of our, sort of we stay within the range of what we're seen and known as. Right. And sort of, okay, that doesn't mean you have to go over here and be completely crazy or do this or do that. And maybe that's not even comfortable to you. Like I've never enjoyed going out and par like partying and being in large crowds and like everyone right. doing. So, I mean, not that I haven't gone out and done that when I was young and thought, okay, but it never felt comfortable to me. I'd right. much rather be at home puttering. Right. You know, or be with a couple of friends and do my thing. I have been social. My work is social. I'm, you know, I enjoy certain social gatherings, but it's right. not my, like my brother loves music. He'll go to every concert, stay up so late, be in a crowd, and he loves it. Mm -hmm. He thrives on it. You know, he he's a musician. His hours are completely the opposite of mine. Mm. You know, so we, we learn. I don't even know what your question was now. I went off. I don't know, but that was awesome. I, I loved the I answer. Went. I went uh, to like it was great. some other things. It was fantastic. Oh, I loved fun. it. Okay. Learned, I learned a little bit more about you, oh, which always makes girl. me happy. Yeah, but it's fun. That's what I, <laughs> I mean. I still want but, the dancing but table it's video, about, It's about boundaries. No, but it is. It's about yeah. expanding our idea of even how our parents, you know, we grew up and our parents see a certain way or we grew up in a certain area. It's these things are all just... We're much more fluid than that. Well, I, I, what I getting also from it is, you know, one of the reasons I think that I don't always pick the the thing that my intuition says to do is is the the fear of the look of others on mm, me. Sure. So letting that go, it's 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 a work. It's it's like it takes time, and but letting it go, it's been. It, the results have been, again, counterintuitive because what I found is that there's certain people that have come to me after and said, how did you do that? Yeah. Like they see me change and they're like, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very different than what I expected. There's always going to be the people who are triggered by it or can't, it's not right, they're not ready for it, and that's okay. Yeah. But you help people yeah. when you do those sh little well, shifts you all expand, the time. Well, when you you create space yeah. for people. So, yeah. And you're expanding and yeah. doing all these wonderful yeah. things that you're doing. Yeah. You're leaving space for other people to yeah. do it, and it's such a, a beautiful thing. Yeah, and that who we are just keeps evolving and changing. It is. It's supposed to evolve and change. It's not a stagnant, like, kind of sit nothing, there and Nothing is, be you that. know. Everything's a living, even relationships, you know, yeah. with... with people we're always growing and changing and expanding and yeah hopefully it's the idea 
Oh my the, goodness. The planets are, the universe is. It's just sort of I feel like we could have we could have continued with like a four hour epic podcast. Ah! But I think that people maybe we'll we just do. have to do we'll do another we, we, one. You and I are always talking about <laughs> these things. We'll we'll do another one we in the future. We need to do a coffee thing. Like uh, just yeah. uh, just like a coffee a talk. Yeah. I love it. Coffee.